Hello. Recently I did the programming for an iOS game called Downhill Supreme. This is in the App Store now. It's a 2D physics based game in which you ride a mountain bike downhill. Uh, so this is the website here and you can sort of get a rough idea of how it works. Uh, this is a screenshot. Um, and this game was made using Box2D and of course with the Rube Box2D editor. So in this video I'm just going to take a look at the mountain bike model because it's quite a complicated model and I learned a few handy things during the making of it that other users of Rube might find handy. So let's um, take a look at the model. This is the the entire model. I'm going to break it into parts and have a look at each individual uh, part of the structure that I found something useful to uh, to learn from and we'll look at each part and separately. Um, so as you can see here there's quite a lot of joints 46 I think 43 and it's uh, quite a mess um, so this took quite a while to to set up and tweak and get everything working properly um, so just to see what we get with that this is the um, model the full model with all the joints and all this mess rendered over the top of it um, so let's break this down. It turns out that as far as the control of the bike and the gameplay is concerned, there's actually only four bodies that play a role. And they are the two wheels, the bike frame, and the torso of the rider. So if I run this scene, we'll see we get pretty much exactly the same behavior here as we did with all of the bodies and the reason for that is that these are the only bodies that have any significant weight significant mass to them so if we have a look here the torso body is 70 kilograms the bike is about 15 and each of the wheels is 2 kilograms each so these are real world values and all the dimensions are real world measurements as well which makes things kind of easy to to create um, so that's the reason that all the other bodies here are not really playing much part in, in the gameplay itself. They're very very light like the legs and the arms and the feet and all the the head and so on are very very light. And They just sort of follow the lead of these heavier bodies. Um, okay what are these um, sensors here for? They're not here. <coughs> excuse me. They're not here to sense anything. The only reason these are here is if I if I hold down the D key, which shows us the relative density of fixtures in the scene, we'll see that the torso there, being 70 kilos, is a lot denser and therefore a lot uh, brighter in this view than anything else. And it turns out that this is the first useful tip that I have that I discovered we look at each of these fixtures here uh, okay if I select this fixture here and look at the density the density of this is zero and the density of the sensor here is 3900 and something so the point of that is that this fixture here contains all of the density for the torso but it has no collision whatsoever it's just a, a collisionless sensor whereas on the other hand the body that defines the collision part of the torso has no density at all. So the point of this is that it allows me to say what I want the torso to collide with by using this fixture at the top and yet I'm free to move the center of mass of the torso around wherever I like like that. So this uh, was very useful in making the handling of the bike change without changing the uh, position of the center of mass of the torso and so on and basically down here we have exactly the same thing for the frame uh, so this collision fixture has zero density I think yep and it has a sensor instead here which contains all of the density of this body and that can be moved around to make the center of mass of the bike lower or higher and uh, make it more prone to leaning forward or backwards and so on uh, so that's that's the first thing that I found that was useful. Um, 
next thing that I found was quite a good idea was using rope joints oh, and I should probably also mention that um, yeah the, the two wheels here are both using wheel joints obviously the front wheel uses a wheel joint as normal and let's hang on let's go to this one this is a little bit easier to explain so the front wheel obviously uses a wheel joint as you might expect but the back wheel is also using wheel joint and the reason for this is that the linkage in these mountain bikes is sometimes quite complicated as we can see here we have an example uh, like this let's turn this off so we can see that there's quite a complicated movement there and these parts are small and they don't have a lot of mass and not only that but there are many many different types of linkages and they all have slightly different arrangements and it's very very well it's almost impossible really to set them all up and have them all working as uh, a really accurate simulation whilst also trying to keep the game in a playable state uh, so what we did was just use normal wheel joints only so you can see the back wheel is not actually rotating around the center of the crankshaft uh, the center of the crank pivot as it should on a real bike it's actually just going straight up and down okay and <coughs> to limit the range of movement of these two wheel joints the front and the back I'm using a rope joint on either side so this rope joint here is connected to the frame at one end and it's connected to the center of the wheel at the other end and that means that when I pull right down at this point here will reach the limit of that rope joint and going up I don't think we'll be able to demonstrate it in this video here but going up there's the same kind of action um, so this is a good way to get a hard limit on wheel joints without actually restricting their movement in between this range so same thing at the front here you can make sure that the wheel cannot compress further than this and it kind of looks like the fixtures here are causing this to stop movement there but that's not actually the case it's the rope joint and also this way as well it means that the wheel uh, no matter how loose and floppy this wheel joint is we can set a very low um, what is the uh, rebound not rebound damn it what is that word <laughs> damping yeah we can set a very low damping and normally when you do that the wheel would just if I held it up here the wheel would kind of fall down way way down and sort of bounce around but because we have these two rope joints on each side restricting its movement uh, that doesn't happen so that's a handy use for rope joints uh, what else did we have okay uh, for pedaling as I said before uh, the frame and the torso are the only bodies that have any significant mass to them so all the bodies in between them in this case the pieces of the leg and the arms they'll just sort of follow around uh, as dictated by the joints so they have revolute joints obviously to pin the elbows together and we also have a bunch of rope joints here just to make sure that these bodies don't go too far in one direction and finally right on the outside here we have four distance joints and these kind of look a bit strange but the reason they are there is to allow the user to tilt the body the tilt the torso so these joints are connected between the frame and the torso and the two going vertically um, allow you to crouch and stand up although we didn't actually end up putting that in the game uh, and the ones going horizontally allow you to sort of twist your twist the rider's torso to make him lean forwards and backwards 
Uh, so just to demonstrate what goes on with there, I've turned the the motor on at the crank, so he's pedaling all the time here. But I can pull the torso around, and you can see that the arm joints, uh, sorry, the arm bodies and the leg bodies are just purely following the torso. They're ju they're just using inverse kinematics, as it were, to find their position. Okay, it's not always perfect, um, especially in the editor. You can make it sort of go crazy if you if you try hard. There we go. And this is uh, another thing that I was going to mention. Notice how the elbows get inverted here. This was really really difficult to um, fix, and that is the reason why. Uh, That is the reason for this huge fixture here. This is fixed. This is part of the frame of the bike, and all it does is prevent this fixture in here. So these two fixtures I've selected here are um, collidable with each other, and this just stops the elbow from going too far forwards up into the front area of the rider. This fixture here, by the way, is to detect when he's crashed into the ground. So it's not really part of the game. I mean, it's not part of the mass or anything, which is another reason why it's good to have this, the mass all concentrated in one place and one fixture like that, because then you can put huge fixtures up here that have uh, no effect on the mass of the body at all. Um, okay, so going back to the pedaling part of the structure. Uh, something I found quite useful here was to have motor joints and motor joints try to keep the relative rotation and location between two bodies constant and in this case all I'm doing is I'm trying to keep the relative rotation between the frame and the each foot constant and so what I mean by that is if we run this scene let's turn fixtures on we can see that if I pull one of these around, it's it's free to move, and this means that when you hit hard down on the ground and the rider's foot hits the ground, it will react appropriately. So it will be pushed around like this. And yet, if I let it go, it snaps back to being level relative to the frame because of this motor joint down here. Motor joints, interesting, interestingly, it doesn't matter where they are. Um, it's quite a counterintuitive thing, I think. Um, so, if I turn the crank around like this, we'll see that the feet stay level relative to the frame, no matter which position they are. So this is a really handy use for motor joints that I uh, came across. And because the body A of these motor joints is the frame. When we turn the frame around, the feet will stay relative to the frame. So this makes it look more natural when the guy is riding downhill, obviously, or uphill. And finally, because the ankle position, uh, the the uh, shin bone coming down here is connected a little bit behind the pivot point of the feet. When he's, when the foot is at the front here and he's pedaling downwards, he tends to. Uh, it tends to make the feet turn more naturally because when you're pushing down with your foot, it ends up in this orientation and when the foot is coming upwards at the back the leg is pulling it upwards a little bit so at the back his foot is sloped like that you'll see that if you play the game the feet sort of look like they're kind of naturally pushing down at the front like that and then pulling pulling upwards at the back like that okay uh, what else do we have okay another little trick I found that was quite useful is when you want to simulate 
a head or something that has quite a, a large free flexible range of movement like the human neck uh, one way you can do it is to use a distance joint so you'd put a joint anchor here and a joint anchor there but it doesn't give you quite the natural look of this arrangement which I discovered which is basically I have three rope joints and a motor joint and the motor joint is continuously trying to keep the head in this spot relative to the torso so you can see body A is the torso for the motor joint and the three rope joints just limit the range of movement so to see that in action we can see that he has free, quite free range of movement to go forwards and backwards. Uh, he can go hunched, hunch into his shoulders and away from his shoulders a little bit, and he can also like uh, look downwards, exposing the bump on the back of his neck, <laughs> and he can look forwards and directly forwards like this, and so on. So it's quite a, a natural range of movement. Oh, there we go so you can even do movements like this as well and it also means that when you go over bumps it has just a little bit of movement in reaction to the the bumps that looks quite natural okay and the last thing uh, that was quite a tricky thing to get right was the linkage between the um, the bike frame and the swing arm and you may have noticed that here we have no nothing at the back here and that's because the things that we're looking at right now are the only parts of the bike that were common to all of the frames and the pieces that come in between the frame and the rear wheel here were quite different for all of them not quite all of them but most of them were very different and we have one example of that here and what we did is uh, we'd set up a linkage file you can see here we have a separate JSON file for each of these linkages and if I run this as we saw before uh, you can see each of these bodies has a uh, sorry each of these linkage pieces has a physics body associated with it but they have no collision they're all sensors uh, and they have very 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 small masses so they don't really play much of a part at all in the physics simulation of the game so this is just a, a cosmetic change um, although it's nice to look at and see the differences in various frames being simulated accurately so in this case uh, we have three pieces to this linkage um, the only part of this that's not really simulated properly is the way the shock absorber doesn't really get compressed so it's just a static sprite it rotates I mean but it doesn't get scaled and compressed into itself um, but when you play the game that's very very hard to notice and quite often the riders legs are over this area anyway and it's uh, not very easy to see so um, that's about all I'm gonna uh, show for this video uh, I took a screen capture of myself playing one level of the game just to show how everything fits together and looks um, in real time when you're actually controlling it using the accelerometer on the device and um, doing some jumps and uh, speeding down the hill and stuff so I'll clip that on the end of this video um, and that's a video uh, it was it's running on the iPad 1 first generation uh, but it doesn't have any sound and I'm not going to add any sound to it so I'll just finish up the um, commentary here and thank you for watching